listening. Why does it matter? It is the foundation around healing work, around being trauma informed, around really, I'm about to go cliche here, but it's to me how we change the world. It's to me one of the foundational principles of how we create peace. And so I'm going to take us through just a quick kind of 101. Here's a refresher of what are the levels of listening. So on our levels of listening, that very, very first one is ignoring. You are really doing very little to engage at all. You are probably physically present, but you're certainly not listening with your ears or your heart at all. We are just tuned out and it is not happening whatsoever. The next one is pretending. Pretending listening. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yes, that's important to you. You're talking. You're talking. It comes across very patronizing, of course. Sometimes it's not ill-intended in the way that it, it presents, but it looks like we're listening. There's parts of us, our body language that can be present, but we are not listening. We're faking it, and what often I think happens is we're called out for it, but that pretending to listen, I would ask us, like, where in our lives do we feel like we are doing this? Are there certain relationships where we feel like we are really pretending to listen? The next level is selective listening. I call this opportunistic listening too. That selective listening to me is the most dangerous. It's a level of listening where you are only hearing bits and pieces. And again, I often reference these in parenting examples, especially as we think about working with young people, being nurturers and connectors of young people. I think this is a place where we sometimes hit a common pitfall, which is we're opportunistically listening to some level. Miscommunication is happening all the time because we're not hearing the whole thing. We're not hearing the whole story. We're not listening with our hearts. And so we're missing what might be the most important part because what we're pulling out is surface. Or we're listening for what we want to respond to because we've had it worse, right? Or, oh, I got that too. I was sicker than a dog and this happened, right? And so what does that look like when it's selective or opportunistic listening? The next one, I feel like in the 90s, I heard people say this a lot in job interviews. I'm an attentive and active listener. If you said, I'm an attentive and active listener, it meant that you were engaged. You were doing a lot of communication 101 right. You had eye contact. You might be leaning in. You were paraphrasing. So what I hear you saying, Sarah, is, right, you were connecting it to your thinking brain, but there is a Cadillac of listening. And I believe in our world and our bodies of work, what we are hoping to be and ways we're hoping to connect, that higher level is the Cadillac of listening, which is intentional and empathetic listening. And I think this sets apart those other four. It's the construct that we have two ears, one mouth, and one heart. And that our heart is a much bigger organ than the components of our ears. And so how are we leaning in? How am I carving out time for you? How am I making it so that you not only feel that you're my priority, but you are? And I think in our day and age, especially young people are starving for it. And I think no amount of technology or access to that type of connection that technology brings for us diminishes the fact that we want to be seen. All of us at human level fundamentally want to be seen and we want outside worlds to pause long enough for someone to sit across from us and say, I see you, I hear you, I'm on this journey with you. And you, there's nothing greater or more important than this moment or this connection right now. And that that makes people feel obviously safe, seen and heard and builds that resilience and builds that connection and the desire for more safe connection to happen. This level of listening requires our greatest amount of attention. It is taking the, those best practices of attentive listening, partnering them with our hearts and with the listening that might occur for what aren't you sharing with me and why. And how can we get there? How can I be someone who helps create brave space that you feel some kind of way about being able to show up authentically? And how do I show up authentically so that you will see that invitation and join me on that?